Welcome back guys. So today we're going to be talking about the NES. Well, in particular, the high def NES mod. Get some HDMI output on this bad boy. Pretty sweet stuff. So that's what we're going to take a look at and talk about today. You know, over the past couple years, we've been getting tons of clone systems for the NES and, you know, the Super Nintendo that have HDMI output. And that's definitely a cool thing. You know, the modern era, if you don't have an old school CRT, you know, how are you plugging your systems in? A lot of TVs are dropping those, you know, inputs. So myself, like many others, constantly trying to find the best options to be able to continue playing our old school games on our modern TVs. And for some of us, these clone systems, specifically the low end ones, don't really cut it. You know, we get visual issues, sound issues, and what better way to get the best would be to use the original system. So I'm all for these different mods that are out there. Most of the systems I have, my retro systems, are modded one way or another. You know, to be able to plug my systems in through HDMI or even component through, you know, an OSSC, I get to enjoy my games, a lot better visuals, can record easily to share things with you guys, and it's just an awesome thing. And with this particular system, I do have a retro USB AVS and it is awesome. I also have an original NES that can, you know, output through RF or, you know, AV, but I can't record any of that. I can't do nothing with that. So that's why I jumped onto this, getting this HDMI modded system. Now, it wasn't as sweet as I was hoping. I was really hoping this would be at least on par with the retro USB AVS and Though it is an awesome mod and I'm not blasting, you know, Kevtris or anybody who, you know, works on these mods, but I have had a pretty bad issue with this that makes it just something that I don't even care for or want. I would rather use my retro USB AVS instead of this. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do is dive up, take a look at the issues I'm talking about and kind of look at it and, you know, discuss it a bit. So let's go ahead, pop in a game, boot it up and take a look. Let's do it. Okay guys, so I'm gonna show you a few issues that I have seen using the high def NES. Uh, really, the reason I'm doing this is to just kinda, you know, educate you guys a little bit, to know what to ask for, to not be surprised like me buying a new system. So if you can see right now, which I'm pretty sure you can, there's a bunch of little pixels in the background on those little hills that are just flashing in and out. You know a few different random positions and they do scroll with the level as you can see but they're just they're flashing back there this for me has been present in pretty much every game that i have played be it on the everdrive or an official cart i have this issue it's something to do with the ppu and the way things are processed going through hdmi and it's just the fault of the the system you know, working with that HDMI output. I'm not too technical, but I know this is a widespread issue a lot of people have had. And ultimately it makes it to where this isn't the best option for me. And I want to make sure people see this and understand what to ask for pretty much. Because a lot of times I feel like sellers who mod systems, they don't actually play the games. You know, they may test a game here and there, make sure it displays but they're not actually going through the game and seeing this stuff. And a lot of these guys who are modding the system, they may not be, you know, one of the recommended modders from the manufacturer, from the people who sell the mod. So they may not know what to look for. So with this, the issue is the revision PPU that I have. Uh, it is a revision G, but revision G is supposed to work fine uh, but from what I understand, Revision H has cleared up most of these issues. So this is, like you saw, a front loader, you know, NES, US NES. And this is issue, like I said, is present in every game. But they did realize this and tried to fix it. So we do have some options if you go into the, the high def NES menu. So in video options, you do have this thing called the speckle, right? So right now we have it on phase two. Uh, phase one I find is the best. Like I get l the least amount of speckles. But it's still present. And for me, if it's still present, it's distracting and bothers the heck out of me. 
So we'll go ahead and go through each one real quick. Phase zero, just to kind of see. Uh, you're seeing a bunch of them back there. You know, a lot of them clustering up. And then phase one. We wind up getting less, I think, with phase one. But it's still pretty prevalent there. You can, you can really see it. Doesn't clear it up, like I said. A lot of people have the best results with phase one. And I do as well, but it's it's still just there. And then phase three, still getting the speckles back there. So for my setup, despeckle does nothing. It just lessens it a little bit or worsens it. It doesn't completely clear it. And that's disappointing for such an expensive modification to get done. Luckily, you know, I'm returning this and I'm getting an RGB NES instead. Hopefully I have no issues with that. But I did want to showcase this. So in this game in particular, you're mostly seeing the speckles in the background. But in other games, like The Legend of Zelda, we'll go ahead and go to The Legend of Zelda. Um, you'll get a lot of speckles around uh, the character, the actual character of the game. So let me show you that real quick. As you see on Link there, I'll try to zoom up so you can see this better. You got a bunch of speckles going around his body. Very, very annoying. That's the, the, the biggest issue that I have is the actual character sprite. You get speckles. Um, you can see them on the left side of the screen as well if you really pay attention. But let's go ahead and change some options on the D speckle and see if it fixes it any. So phase one is, for me, the best results. Have we cleared them? No, we have not. They're still shimmering around his body. Go to phase zero. All around his ears, butt, his legs, everything. So it's, it's just there. There's nothing you can do about it from what I understand and from what I have seen. Uh, this A lot of people have this issue. A lot of people don't notice this, to be honest with you. Me, I'm sitting two feet away from my monitor, and I can see it as clear as day. So this is just something I wanted to show you guys so you can make sure if you're buying one that you do ask the seller you know, about the revision on the PPU or if there's any speckle issues, uh, if they're present regardless of the de-speckle options you use and stuff like that. The other issue, and I'll show a couple quick screen grabs um, is a lot of a lot of games not every game, but a lot of them like Super Mario Brothers 1 for example You'll get these uh, lines in the screen these little horizontal lines of pixels Sometimes they're like cross sections of something else that's on the screen and those are not normally present in the game Running through composite or you know other means it's something that's isolated to an issue with the PPU and the high-def NES you know communicating uh, but I get that on the uh, Super Mario Brothers game, and it is really annoying. So for me, unfortunately, the high-def NES is not the best option for me. It's not what I was looking for. Uh, if I had a, you know, Revision H PPU, I guess I would probably be happy. The issues would most likely not be there from all the research I have done and from what others have told me. And it's, it's really a tough thing because a lot of people I've asked, they said it's very hard to source specific PPUs because uh, you, you know, you're going to have to sacrifice that Nintendo if you're swapping it to something else or just keep buying Nintendos and find one with the PPU version that you want. So that can be a little frustrating, you know. And it was just some information I needed to share with you guys. Like I said, I'm swapping mine out. For an RGB modded NES, see how that goes for me. But for now, with my retro USB AVS, being able to play that through HDMI, that's good enough for me. It works out great. So really do appreciate you guys popping in. Just wanted to show all these little issues real quick just to help some people out, hopefully. The high-def NES, if it worked properly with all revision PPUs or if there was some kind of firmware updates that fix these issues i think it would be an excellent option to have the best looking visuals on your nes but with just the unknown 
uh, and randomness behind this, it just it bothers me quite a bit to where I wasn't going to be content and just dealing with it, if you know what I mean. So appreciate it, guys. Smash that like button, subscribe, do all that cool stuff. And with that said, I will catch you all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye.